herbal life in a new 52-week high today. Can healthy growth overseas keep this stock soaring? Kramer goes one-on-one with Herbal Life CEO Michael Johnson to find out on the executive decision. Herbalife, HLF for all you home gamers, the nutritional supplements and personal care products company that sells its products via multi-level marketing and direct selling. Once you think of Avon or Tupperware, uh, for vitamins, it's hitting a 52-week high today. And we need to know if it's still worth buying. Now, this is one of those stocks that has been dogged unfairly by rumors from the shorts about how, that's the short sellers, about how its business model works or doesn't work. And because it can be hard to get your hand and your head around the model, they sell supplements to salespeople who sell them to other salespeople who finally sell them to you. There have been questions about whether it's doing its business right. Some on Wall Street have always regarded Herbalife as a pyramid scheme. That has not been the case here on Mad Money. But such acquisitions have, you know, have come back to bite the company in the past. In fact, they even got into me, frankly. Back on June 17th, when the stock was at $27.75, I even questioned Herbalife's model. I, I couldn't recommend it. We missed out on a 47% run. You know what happened? I'm sure this has happened to you. I'm just human. I got beleaguered by the cat calls and the negatives. I couldn't take it anymore. I figured someone knows something that I didn't know, okay? Here's the thing. Herbalife, under its current CEO, has never really had a problem with its business model or its sales. But it is easy for unscrupulous hedge fund managers to spread rumors and to spread gossip that hurt the stock so it's relentlessly pursued and banged down by the shorts to make it so a guy like me just says, look, I probably don't know what's really happening here. Maybe I'm missing the real story. These guys can't be that wrong, right? This is despicable behavior. It's the sort of thing that nearly destroyed our financial system at the beginning of the year. But you don't see the government going after the false rumor mongers. I would like to know what shorts earn their false profits in Herbalife. Eventually, though, of course, as is with any good company, the truth does come out. The stock does come back to life. But unless you're the kind of executive who's willing to give out illegal insider information to, to defuse the shorts, you have to wait to disclose the numbers and can't rebut in real time the rumors of the bear raiders in the short term. For Herbalife, the stock sprung back after being rumored down when it reported a spectacular 16-cent earnings beat. Remember, there were estimates, and it beat those earnings estimates gigantically. That was on November 2nd. It was done on higher-than-expected revenues. You know how much we like that. The top line, better-than-expected guidance for the fourth quarter and for 2010 to boot. I think Herbalife is the best of the best of the direct sellers for this environment. It has more international exposure than Avon or Tupperware. And Nutrisystem, which you might think would be the most similar, is actually more of a weight loss club with hardly any international exposure yet. Herbalife has also put in the second best performance since its IPO at the end of 2004. It's up 178% in that period behind Nutrisystem. And to top it all off, Herbalife is the cheapest of the group, trading at 12 times 2010 earnings. Avon, 16. Tupperware's 14, 20 for Nutrisystem. So it's got the most consistent growth, and it also has the lowest multiple. Seems strange to you? Don't take it from me. Let's hear from Michael Johnson, the CEO of Herbalife, for the full story. Michael, welcome back to the show. Hi, Jim. All right, Michael, you guys are expanding like mad, growing overseas. Every day we hear the uh, hand ringing about a weak dollar, weak dollar, weak dollar. Could you please tell, once and for all, our viewers, what it means to, to be Selling, selling in one currency and then having it translate to a weaker currency and how it benefits the shareholders of that company. Well, we do 80% of our business overseas, and so a weaker dollar actually benefits us. It doesn't benefit our travel and entertainment, but it certainly benefits our business overseas because we're buying, obviously, dollars at a different rate. And so we're benefiting. Well, do you, when you hear about the, oh, the dollar's so weak, I mean, don't you have to say, you know what, that is really going to benefit anyone who owns Herbalife stock? Yeah, I don't want to sound like anti-American or anything I like know, that. We're not, we don't have a fan club for, you know, a weakening dollar, but a weakening dollar does benefit our shareholders. Now, you guys continue to come into some exciting markets each time I see you. A year ago, just tell me the markets that you've come in, gone into in the last year to 18 months. Well, we, we've just opened up Vietnam this week, which is fantastic. Well, what does that a, matter? Do people in Vietnam, they want supplements? They want to... Do, what do they know? I mean, I'm not, I'm not denigrating no, Vietnam, but I'm no. saying, how do you convince them that this is right for them? Well, the company's success recently has been built on daily consumption. This is a meal. That's a great okay. meal right there. I tell my friends, that's the best meal you're going to get all day today. Vitamins, great nutrition, good minerals, carbohydrates, proteins, all that. Okay. Everybody needs a good meal in their life. 
Vietnam is 87 million people. 40% of the population is under 25 years old. They're looking for jobs, they're looking for income. And so we have this two-way street, health and wealth. Great meal, great business opportunity. And if they apply the same methods that have been applied in markets like Taiwan, Korea, Mexico, and start these nutrition clubs, we have got a beautiful daily consumption model that builds a opportunity for income and an opportunity for better nutrition. Okay, well that's good in the emerging markets. One of the things that surprised me is, is that the number of sales leaders declined in the quarter, but volume still grew. I would think with the unemployment level around the world that should, the number of people who would want to take on another job like selling Herbalife would have gone up. Why is that now inconsistent with what's happening at your company? Well, give me, let me give you two answers okay. and not try to make it too windy All here. Right. One is that our model was probably not perfect for these times but to become a 50% discount seller. So I get a 50% discount, I make money 50% on retail, right? Okay. So I buy it right. at 25, sell it at 50. That model was based on you doing $2,500 a month for two months or doing 4,000 in one month. That's a big entry fee in these times. Yes. So we just changed the model. We said, look, let's take that over 12 months. And our distributors absolutely bought into this. They are supporting this. Actually, a distributor had this idea. We tested it in mm -hmm. Russia. Huge success. And so now we're rolling it out globally. I think you'll see our supervisors, our distributor sellers, increase over the next year to year and a half. Now, the other side is you asked, well, why is the volume going up if you haven't recruited more? Right. Nutrition. I mean, because remember, everyone, you know, the bears say, listen, it's just a recruitment scheme. And as long as they keep recruiting, their numbers go up. The moment they stop recruiting, the numbers go down. That is not what happens. Well, isn't that interesting? That means that individual, and you would call it per store performance, right. per distributor performance is going up. So people are working harder. They're more productive. Productive. They're doing a better business individually. And so we're seeing those numbers go up, which is a solid base for this company. It means retailing is mm -hmm. vigorous. It's taking place. It gets rid of all that, you know, you used the word before, so I'm not going to use it all this stuff. Right. It goes away. All right, well, let's talk about what, let's speak future. Many CEOs have found their companies under attack. Many CEOs have found that there are short sellers who really need to have a stock go down. What's your advice to them about how to take on people who spread false rumors about a company that is literally just a profit at shareholders' expense by lying? Well, these are, these are unique times. And I don't know if I have sage advice for another CEO. I know what we did. We said, we're going to beat this out with numbers. And we're going to continue to improve our company in all levels, from the product, through the business opportunity, the brand, the image of the company. We're just going to keep posting numbers. And we'll let the numbers speak for us. Our distributors are a wonderful group of human beings. They have got a wonderful business opportunity. They know it. They know they do it with integrity and honesty because we make sure that the Golden Goose, this great company, Herbalife, continues to prosper and thrive. So we're just going to beat it out. We couldn't do, you know, we couldn't take on anybody who's putting these rumors because then, is like you said in your warm-up, we're just out there fighting that pitched battle. One way to stop these people cold is to pay a higher dividend because they got to pay out the dividend. How about a dividend boost for Herbalife, which has always returned good money to its shareholders? Well, I'll bring you into our board meeting and you can, I you will. can work that I'm with happy to. I'm happy to proselytize <laughs> for dividends because I think that they're amazing. Well, look, you have $250 million in cash. You, want, you have almost no debt. You continue. You have an analyst day, December 17th. What a great time to announce that you're going to return some of that cash to shareholders. Well, we've given almost 500 million back to shareholders in share no. repurchase and dividends. Very so few companies active. have been as shareholder friendly, and I'm hoping to hear some good. Well, what? Well, I'm sure we'll hear some good things at the December 17th meeting. You're going to hear a much more in-depth view of the company in today and into the future. Well, I would tell people right now, listen to me. This guy is money in the bank. I bet you if you own the stock ahead of the December 17th analyst meeting, you're going to fe feel richly rewarded. And the fact that I, that I left the story because I was beleaguered, let that be a lesson to you. If you get beleaguered but the story's good, just stay the course. That's what's matter. That's Thanks, what Craig. matters. Michael Thank you so much for coming Thank on the you. show. Really appreciate it. Stay with Kramer.